Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Of course you know what this video is about. It's gonna be about the Canon ATD manual settings. Here is the Canon ATD with a 18 to 135 lens with a 3.5 to 5.6 aperture. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably don't really know what these terms mean, but before we get into any of those terms, there is one thing you have to do to make your camera go into manual. To have your camera in manual mode, you have to spin this wheel here by pressing the button on top and rotating it so that you find the letter M and it's aligned with the white dot, meaning that you are in full manual settings. There are three terms that you need to be familiar with in order to operate a camera in manual mode. One, shutter speed. The shutter speed indicates the speed of the shutter as it allows light to pass through and hit the sensor. With higher numbers, less light comes in, which results in less of a blur and the lower the number the more light comes in and the more blur there is as blur it's the background blur that you see in many videos two aperture so aperture indicates how wide the lens opens to allow light to hit the sensor so it's another light thing but the aperture is determined by your lens here we have a 18 to 135 lens with an aperture of 3.5 to 5.6. This can be located right over here. Now, what does this range mean? 3.5 to 5.6. What this range means is basically at a focal length of 18, the aperture will be 3.5. At a focal length of 135, the aperture will be 5.6. These are, of course, minimums. The aperture goes up all the way to 22. Now, you also have lenses that have a fixed aperture. For example, the lens that's right here, it's a 16 to 35 with a fixed aperture of four. So no matter which focal length you select, you still have an aperture of four. Three, ISO. So ISO indicates the sensitivity of the image sensor to the light that is hitting it. So the higher the ISO, the more noise your image will have. So noise means that it's going to be a lot whiter and the pixels will be more visible and the image will be less crisp. So the lower the ISO, the crispier the image and the less noise you have. This setting, the ISO setting, is mostly used to compensate for poor lighting conditions. So that means not having soft boxes or just being in the darkness or shooting pictures at night or videos, so you adjust the ISO. Now let's look at the camera itself and see where all these three important terms can be found. This is the LCD display. This is where you will find most of the terms we discussed. So. 320 here is the shutter speed, 3.5 over here is the aperture, and 400 is the ISO. Now, how do I adjust these settings? To adjust these settings, it's very straightforward. To adjust the shutter speed, you would just turn this wheel and notice this number go up. You see, going down, going up. The aperture in my case, I usually go to the small display that's right here, and I will usually select this here and scroll here and change the aperture to what I want to have it. The ISO is pretty straightforward as well. It has a dedicated button with ISO. Now, if you select the ISO button, you will see here that the ISO is gonna go up or down, depends on the way you're scrolling. Now let's take a look on how to adjust your camera so that you have a nice crisp image. You're going to look at the display here while I'm gonna make some settings. So we're going to start with the ISO. So since we're in a controlled environment with soft boxes, so controlled light, we're going to set the ISO to its lowest. So around 200 to 400 in lighting conditions that are controlled is excellent. So it's, let's just select 400. Now, as you can see, it's still pretty dark. To change that, we're going to change the aperture since you see that it's set at 10. 10 is a lot and this lens can go all the way down to 3.5. 
as you can see, something is starting to appear. Something that's in front is appearing and we are getting closer to having a nice image. We're going to try to adjust the shutter speed now. So the shutter speed is the wheel that you turn on the camera and if we go higher, there's less light. So let's go a lot lower. And as you can see, the paper starts appearing and we are happy. So if you like this result, you can tweak it a little bit. Another thing that I find that not many people mention in these videos is the white balance. White balance is very important for your videos as well. To access the auto white balance, you would click Q, open up AWB, and then down here you have all of the different options for your settings of white balance. If you're shooting outdoors, I would recommend personally that you stay on the auto white balance, so the AWB option, as it works very well and does the auto white balance for you and you don't have to be changing it in all the different shots. The only reason why to go off the auto white balance is because you want to have a complete consistent image and temperature in all your photo. So you, if you're in a controlled environment, you can set up your own white balance and that way all your images and videos are the same white balance. Now, pretty much we just covered all of the manual settings on the camera and how they work. Um, there are still some that you might have questions about, like autofocus, face tracking, what kind of like focus and so on. Those I will leave for another video if you would like, that you have to let me know in the comments as well or by leaving a like. Now, let's continue to a next term that is very important in the camera. That's determining exposure. On the LCD screen right over here, you see this bar. This can be also referred to as a light meter. As you adjust your shutter speed and your aperture, this bar here is gonna let you know whether or not you did a good job or a bad job. Keep in mind that doing manual settings here is not perfect, it was just quick. It takes a lot of time and practice to master this and takes a lot of time to set up your shots. You're going to check your light meter by pressing the shutter button right here. Hold on to that and as you can see, this black little dot here is all the way near minus two. Minus two means that your image is too dark. So this is not everything it takes to make a perfect picture because sometimes you want to have a picture that is darker or lighter. So what are my final thoughts? Well, when shooting outside, the ISO should be as low as possible because if it's too high, it's going to create too much noise which will make your image not crisp, which is bad for your image. Then you should adjust your aperture to as high as the lens allows, which means about 3.5 in my case. After adjusting these two settings, you would go and adjust the shutter speed to fine tune the exposure and then go on and check your light meter to see if your image and your manual settings are adjusted properly. These two things are only good in outside conditions. When you're shooting indoors or in darker conditions, you'll be mostly going through the ISO and the aperture. Now also keep in mind that there are some goods and bads, pros and cons about shooting on the highest aperture, which is like 3.5. For example, if you have a lens 3.5 to 5.6, your lens would make the sharpest pictures and perform the best in about four, four aperture. Yeah, you'll find that most lenses usually have a crisper and sharper image towards the middle of their aperture. But this is what you have to experiment with and test this all out for yourself. So anyway, Manual settings take a lot of time, a lot of learning, a lot of practice. So don't just follow this video. It's not a professional video. I am still learning. Everyone is still learning. You perfect your skill over time and don't expect to be perfect and make perfect shots when you're in manual for the first time. But if you enjoyed this video and you want more about the manual settings on the ATD, let me know by leaving a like and a comment It'll be greatly appreciated. And also don't forget to subscribe. But that's it. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.